Hi, I'll be talking about Open RAN today. Open RAN basically is originated by a community called TIP, which is Telecom Infra Project, uh, which consists of different telecom operators, vendors, and suppliers across the group. They came together to innovate the radio access network part, and they have given the name Open RAN. Uh, open here refers to um, something which is not doesn't belong to any individual or an organization. Uh, any entity which is currently in use in radio access network, be it hardware, software, interface, uh, whatnot, everything uh, will be shifted from proprietary to non-proprietary uh, in Open RAN. So it is basically the commercial of the shelf concept. Uh, also in Open RAN, it is more about the disaggregation of the services so that uh, we can disaggregation of the hardware so that there will be different services that can be provided by Open RAN. Um, Open RAN further is more focused on the virtualization, cloudification, and software. Uh, if you look, this is uh, the comparison between the traditional and the Open RAN. On the left side, this is the traditional radio access network where we have uh, baseband unit and the radio unit. The baseband unit currently is, uh, it belongs to a single supplier, both the hardware and the software, and they're coupled together. Uh, and this particular unit, further technically, it is uh, all the three layers, layer one, two, three functionalities are being provided by a single baseband unit, which doesn't provide the much flexibility to provide uh, different service requirement in 5G. Uh, one thing is a shift from proprietary to non-proprietary, decoupling of software and hardware in open RAN. In virtualization, uh, there is a general purpose hardware instead of proprietary hardware, then there is the operating system on the top of that. Here I've taken an example of containers uh, then it is providing a microservices depending upon what kind of functionality we want to provide on a particular hardware. Accordingly, we have a software for that. And then we have an orchestrator. Here I have taken an example of Kubernetes, which will manage all the different kind of containers and VMs. Uh, we have an EM EMS, similarly what we have today in our existing networks, which will manage the multiple different sites. With the cloudification, we'll be able to scale up and scale down uh, the capacity of the sites as and when we need it or these different units. Uh, on the right side, if you see, we have uh, uh, different boxes, which is a distributed unit, or DU. Then we have a centralized unit, uh, CU. Centralized unit can be further divided into the control plane part and uh, user plane part, depending upon what, how, how do we want to place it and what kind of service we want to provide. Also, uh, the different layers will be distributed between these two boxes. Uh, we have seen that uh, for uh, real-time scenarios, uh, most of the functionalities related to the scheduling that has been uh, kept closer to the RU, which is on DU, and the uh, rest of the functionalities which is going towards uh, the core network uh, or related to the QoS, that is kept uh, at the CU level. Um, all these boxes can be kept at edge or regional level. We will see it in the next slides. Uh, this is the open RAN architecture in a little bit more detail. As uh, we discussed, uh, this is the distributed unit and this is the centralized unit, which is uh, in case of open RAN, it has been divided. Um, now the single BBU is disaggregated. Uh, again, uh, the functionality, we can see the layer one and two functionalities are there in DU layer two, some part of layer two and layer three functionalities are there in CU. There is a open interface now, F1 interface. There is a eCPRI, which is evolved version of CPRI, which we are using currently in 3G, 4G network. So that is to provide uh, better throughputs. And then we have uh, uh, a RIC, which is a radio intelligent controller, which is again, a third party customized applications we can provide using this box. Here uh, we can, by using the machine learning, we can uh, provide different kind of mobility management, uh, uh, evolution, traffic management in an efficient way, different antenna techniques, we can optimize them, uh, we can manage the interference, and all these things can be further managed by uh, a RIC, which is a known real-time RIC sitting a little bit far off uh, somewhere in the data center, where the orchestration and the automation is happening. Uh, there is a big role being played by machine learning here, uh, by different, uh, by training and deploying the different models, taking the data from the base stations, uh, identify that which model is more accurate to provide, be it as a case of mobility management, all other applications we just talked about. Uh, and then we can,
And then we can look at um, the kind of deployment scenarios in case of open RAN. We can see that uh, we can keep uh, like what we are doing today. We are putting basement unit and the radio unit at the cell site, or we can put some part of uh, the basement unit, which is here now DUCU or the rig that will be kept at the edge cloud, or we can again further, there are different permutations and combinations. We can put DUCU in the rig accordingly. Further CU can is divided into uh, user plane and control plane, and we can we can place them accordingly depending upon the kind of services we are using. Uh, C category uh, basically or scenario C is is uh, widely being used or will be used in open RAN scenario where basically for the outdoor deployments in a dense urban area we can provide uh, depending upon uh, what kind of service it is we can keep a CU user plane closer uh, at the edge cloud or maybe we can keep it at the regional cloud depending upon if it is machine-to-machine uh, -machine type communication or it is a, a time-sensitive applications. Um, now, why do we need open RAN? We, there is, uh, obviously, it is not a proprietary now, so there will be uh, less cost. And we know that the radio access network um, is basically contributing to 70% of the total cost of the network for any telecom operator. So it, there, is be, there will be a huge savings on the CapEx uh, operational point of view, again, in proprietary hardware software, we have to uh, give some kind of AMC or there is associated cost for any upgrade uh, for these proprietary uh, boxes. So again, the OPEX cost is very high uh, in case of conventional RAN. So in case of open RAN, that has been reduced. Then there is no vendor lock-in. Uh, time to market is low because you can procure material from multiple suppliers and you can put on, put on some intelligence by using machine learning or artificial intelligence. And with some positives, there are some negatives also. Uh, integrating any big network into in telecom or a critical infrastructure today uh, with the new uh, concept of open RAN is a little bit tricky. So that is something where we can, um, any operator would like to have some kind of assurance uh, from the different vendors. There should be some more maturity. There, sh there should be more multi-vendor interoperability. The connectivity definitely required is more robust because we are disaggregating the devices uh, functionalities and then we need um, much higher capacity, latency, um, efficient latency or reduced latency. Uh, then from the operations perspective, it will not be, it will be a bit challenging for uh, any operator to run their network because now there will be multiple suppliers and vendors involved into it and uh, uh, to manage such critical infrastructure, it is important to have uh, a good coordination among them. And there is um, a future-ready approach among the people, among the employees also, that uh, the automation and DevOps concept should to be uh, incorporated across board. So uh, this is all about Open RAN. Thank you very much.